that was used in the grand final yesterday. Uh, the coach of the winning team, Ian Boucher from Spalding, with the Sharon football. That uh, well, that's the that's the one the umpires brought into the dressing room afterwards. That's the one, uh, Ian. That's right, Ron. Uh, I know there were several lost, but this is one that was given to me by the umpires after the game. And Tony, we're pleased. Everybody that makes Sharon footballs, everybody down there at the Sharon factory, very pleased about the game yesterday. And we'd like you to take this back for the trophy case to Richmond with our congratulations. Thanks, Ian. It's absolutely marvellous, Tony. Thank you. And on, uh, on behalf of the club, I'd like to thank you uh, very much for your fine moment of our uh, win. Thanks very much. Thanks, How many footballs did you use yesterday? Uh, I'd say there would have been at least eight in the uh, main game and uh, probably 20 all day, right? 20 all day. At right. least. Well, there it is. Well done, anyway. Congratulations <laughs> again, Tony. Sure. Well done. And uh, we'll see the Sharon footballs being used in the Spalling Handball Championship coming up shortly on World of Sport. The Handball Championship, sponsored by Sport. Yes, it's the grand final of the Spalding Handball Championship, and it's over uh, 20 shots today. This is the first half of the competition. Each competitor will have five shots with each hand, and then later in the program, five shots with each hand again. And the finalist, in the order in which they'll fire to the target, Stephen Mount of Richmond, Alan Jarrett of North Melbourne, and Peter Morrison of South Melbourne. That's the order they'll go. We're ready. Sharon footballs are at the ready, and we're set to go. Stephen Mount, Alan Jarrett, and Peter Morrison. With Stephen Mount to fire first. Now three judges in position. Seven. Seven. Fourteen. Ten. Twenty-four. Seven. Uh, Thirty-one. Ten. And forty-one. Forty-one for Stephen Mount of Richmond after his first five shots. Next to fire will be Alan Jarrett, and he's going to use the left hand first. Left hand first for Alan Jarrett. Football's ready, and here we go. Seven. Seven. Fourteen. Ten. Twenty-four. Seven. Thirty-one. Ten. Ten. Forty-one. Exactly the same scoring pattern as... Uh, Stephen Mount, and now it will be left hand being used by uh, Peter Morrison of South Melbourne. His two opponents have got 41. 7, 31. 5, 5, 7, 12, 10, 22, 32 7 7 for 39 right uh, now they go to the opposite hands and the position is that uh, that uh, Stephen Mount of Richmond has 41 Alan uh, Jarrett of North Melbourne 41 and Peter Morrison of uh, South Melbourne has 39 we'll be back in just a moment <laughs> keep going good okay let's go <laughs> right Stephen Mount of Richmond left hand Seven. For 48. Seven. For 55. Seven. For 62. Seven. For 69. Ten. 79. 79 for Stephen Mount of Richmond. Jack. Jack. Alan Jarrett will come to use the right hand. And he used the left hand in his first shot and has scored 41 points with uh, his left hand. Now goes to the right hand. Ten. For 51. Ten. 61. Ten. 71. Seven. 78. Ten. 88. 88 points for uh, Alan Jarrett. With four tens and a seven, Stephen Mount has uh, 79. And now it's uh, South Melbourne's Peter Morrison with 39 points to use the right hand. Seven. For 46. 
10 for 56. 10 for 66. 7 for 73. 7 for 80. So that's the position at the halfway mark in the competition. Alan Jarrett of North Melbourne leads with 88. Uh, Peter Morrison of South Melbourne in second position with 80. And in third position, Stephen Mount of Richmond with 79. It's a pretty close one, and each competitor has 10 shots to go, and you'll be seeing those later in the program. The words almost failed. The second half of the grand final, and the position at the moment is that uh, uh, Richmond Stephen Mount has 79 points, North Melbourne's Alan Jarrett has 88 points, and South Melbourne's Peter Morrison has 80 points, and each competitor has 10 shots to go. Ready to go, and it will be Stephen Mount of Richmond with 79 points, using the right hand to fire first to the hot dot target. Seven. Eighty-six. Seven. Ninety-three. Seven. One hundred. Seven. One hundred and seven. Seven. One hundred and fourteen. And that's the position with five shots to go for Stephen Mount. Now the leader, Alan Jarrett, who has 88 points. He's opening with the left hand, as he did in the first round. Ten. Ten for 98. Ten. Ten for 108. Ten. 118. Seven. Seven. 125. 135. 135 for North Melbourne's Alan Jarrett. Now Peter Morrison of South Melbourne, who has 80 points. Has 80 points. Left hand. Sharon Football is back in position, ready to go. 10. 7. That's 87. 7. For 94. 93. 94. 94, 104, 7, 111, 10, 121. So the position is with five shots to go, the leader is Alan Jarrett of North Melbourne with 135, then Peter Morris of South Melbourne 121, and uh, Stephen Mount of Richmond with 114. They go now to their last five shots. Left hand for. Stephen Mount of Richmond, 114, Ten. 124, Seven. 131, Seven. 138, Seven. 145, Seven. 152, final score for Stephen Mount of Richmond, 152. Now, the change over here is the other two competitors will be using their right hand. Stephen Mount finishing with 152. <laughs> Alan Jarrett is next and he'll be using the right hand. He has 135 points. Five shots to go. Right hand. Seven. Seven. 142. Seven. 149. Seven. 156. 166. 7. 173. Alan Jarrett, 173. Peter Morrison has 120, 121. With five shots to go. 7. 128. 7. 135. 142. 152. 159. So the final placings in our Spalding World of Sport Handball Championship. The winner is Alan Jarrett of North Melbourne. Runner-up was Peter Morrison of South Melbourne. 
And third place goes to uh, Stephen Mount of Richmond, and we'll be back with those, um, uh, those finalists in just a moment. Right, third place, and a check for $100 from Spalding to uh, Richmond's uh, Stephen Mount with 152 points. Mr Ian Boucher, Advertising Manager of Spalding. Congratulations, Stephen. Uh, third place, you won the Premiership yesterday. You can't win them all, but well done. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well done, uh, Stephen. And runner-up, $200 to uh, South Melbourne's Peter Morrison with 159. Congratulations, Peter. Uh, from all that's falling, uh, well done. Uh, Alan's a bit too good on the day, but keep at it. Thank you very much. And the winner of our uh, World of Sport Handball Championship, which has been sponsored by Spalding throughout the uh, football season, is North Melbourne's Alan Jarrett with 173 yeah. and first prize, 300 bucks. Congratulations, Alan. You're making a little bit of a habit of this. You won in 78. Yes. Keep up the good work, Alan. Uh, we're pleased that uh, elite footballers participate in it. We like that uh, Channel 7 do put it on. It's great involvement for us, and uh, we're pleased that uh, you fellows come in every Good Sunday idea. and do it. Congratulations. Thanks very much, Jack. Good just like to... Uh, you came up from the bottom, Al, didn't you? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to thank... Uh, <laughs> just like to thank uh, Spalding and Channel 7, and to uh, you, Ian, your company, Spalding. I'd like to... Uh, Thank them very much. They've, uh, and it's another thing that they're helping football with, and uh, it all combines to make football as big as it is. And uh, I hope that uh, Sporting continue to sponsor football in the way that they have, and with Channel Seven. Thanks very much. Well done, Alan. Well spoken. And thank you, Ian, for uh, association throughout the year. And uh, there are your three finalists, and the winner, Alan Jarrett of North Melbourne. Well done in the Sporting Handball Championship has been the sponsor of when you speak of Kevin Bartlett because most of the superlatives, adjectives and cliches have been used on this little Richmond champion a hundred times over. But certainly today we could make no apologies for using them once more. Magnificent Kevin Bartlett really was yesterday. In fact, the game of Kevin yesterday in which he equaled the goal-kicking record in the VFL Grand Final helped the Tigers to a record-winning margin in the Premiership and generally he captivated the audience. A great performance. At 33, and the VFL record holder with 3.39 games to his credit, Bartlett is probably playing the best football of his career. No doubt his selection on the half-forward flank has given him a new lease of life. He's turned into a Houdini around the goals and a constant danger to the opposition. Someone pulled Kevin's hair in the grand final yesterday, and we'll agree it turned him into a Samson as well. Well done, Kevin Bartlett, and the game that earned him a standing ovation. Now, it's silly with Doug White. Sure Just what were you saying there to uh, Stan Mogo? Uh, nothing really, Doug. We hadn't played on each other for a while, so uh, we'll just. Did you said that you've got two on you? I've got two on you now. Oh no, no. Uh, I think uh, Stan and I have had some uh, good contests in the past, and we'll, it was only a friendly wrestle, really. Peter said in the opening that you're probably playing your best football that you ever played. Would you feel that? Oh, well, I, I don't know about that, Doug, uh, but uh, I've been very pleased this particular year, of course, of, of uh, playing in a new position, of course, which well, makes things a bit different. Well, what was it like? I mean, what was your feeling that, uh, I know Tony Jewell said all along that Richmond were never going to clear, but what was your feeling when they said that you no longer wanted you to, to over and they were going to put you on the half-forward flank? Uh, well, you know, there was a lot of differences uh, with the club uh, during the year, but what, in, what, what differences? In what way? Well, I suppose a, lot, a few personality clashes, I suppose, but... Uh, did you feel unwanted? At one oh, step? yes, certainly that. I did feel that. And uh, so uh, that was one of the, the problems that I, I felt I had. Uh, but playing in the position, positional problems weren't any... was no problem at all. I was never worried about where I particularly played. Uh, but uh, the way certain things were handled sort of disappointed me and uh, we had to sort of uh, work those things out. But, well, well, it's, it's fairly important, I suppose, uh, you know, Tony said that you're definitely, there was no way you're going to be cleared and those, those things that you're worried about, can you talk about those? Oh, well, I don't really think it's necessary now, Doug. Uh, I think main, the main, one of the main problems was uh, lack of communication right. uh, and I felt as captain of the club, uh, the communication between me and the, and the club and uh, say with Tony uh, wasn't as good as what it should have been and, uh, and I think a lot of the things uh, well started from that point. Right. Look, um, how do you approach a game? I was, I was watching your wife Denise the other night uh, in an interview saying that you are just the same approach coming up to the finals as you are at any time. Is that pretty close uh, to the fact or are you inside your well, uh, keyed up more? Well, I try and uh, be fairly low-keyed. Uh, I made a point of uh, 
Well, I, I never read any newspapers from Thursday on for a start. Uh, Why is that? Well, uh, I didn't want to put any, say, uh, pressure on myself or pressure on the side, uh, you know, and there's uh, a lot of things are written and said, who may play on you or who may not, uh, what, what you might be expected to do, and uh, so I, I didn't bother reading any, say, new newspapers, as I say, from Thursday. My wife's kept them all, I'll read them probably tonight, but uh, I just wanted to uh, concentrate on the things that I felt I would have to do as a player to help the side and not worry about any external problems. Right. Tony also mentioned that there was a, a, an attitude amongst the players that they wanted to show you and Berkey that they, you were playing with a just as good a side. Is that, is that true? Do you yes, think that yes. Uh, Tony mentioned that many times during the year. Do that you think it, it is as good a side? Well, I think it's as equal to the other sides I've played in. I, I wouldn't like to pick one grand final side better than the other because each one of those, of course, uh, had to put up a tremendous performance to win the grand final in their own particular year. Mm -hmm. uh, but so, therefore, I would rank all the sides equal. But uh, yesterday's performance was a magnificent one, and certainly, I think, one of the best performances ever by a Richmond side. I must say, just one question about your skills, which I believe have improved over mm -hmm. the last two years. Uh, you personally and the whole team, but the, mm -hmm. your skill at kicking for goal now, I mean, it's unbelievable. Well, I've I've tried to put a lot of, lot of work into that because, uh, you know, it was an area of my game which, uh, you know, left a little bit to be decided and uh, I've got to thank Sheeds a lot for that because uh, he's put a tremendous amount of effort and timing with me at training and kicking on the side and uh, giving me tremendous help and uh, he's been not only good for me but good for all the boys at Richmond. Well, he's uh, terrific, Doug, and yeah. of course, as a half foot, you go for another 10 years, Kevin, you'll be 44 before you finish. <laughs> I feel 44, Lou. But, Kevin, you said a very valid point, too, that you will not, you'll keep on playing until you haven't got one game left in you. Well, that, that's what I hope to do, Lou. You'll do it because you're a little champ, there's no doubt about that. There's the yeah. bottle of uh, champagne from Thomas Hardy. Thank You've you. also got the Ballantyne's chocolate straws, the ginger uh, coated, uh, well, the chocolate coated gingers. Thank you. Plus all the goodies. Can you take those, Doug, from oh, Ballantyne? Uh, yeah. There's the Ballantyne cheese plus the goodies from uh, Hutton's. Hutton's. Oh, and uh, uh, Kevin, you are first class and you'll travel Tosca all the time because that's a bag. Thank you, you very right? much, Lou. God bless you. Big hand for Kevin. Great effort. Lou said. Thanks, Doug. He'll be around for another 10 years, no worries. <laughs> Magnificent effort. Kevin Bartlett, one of the stars of yesterday's grand final. For a television club